Hey guys, it's Jen. Today I'm going to be doing part two of my holy grails this year. This is the skincare portion. So if you want to also check out the makeup portion of the video, I will leave that link in the info box down below as well as up there. But let's go into the best skincare products from 2023 slash 2024. These are all of the top of the top skincare products that I have used in the last year. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna start off with face wash. This has been an oldie but a goodie, but I swear to you, I still keep going back to it. It's one of the best gel cleansers I've ever used. It's by Clinique. This is their Liquid Facial Soap Mild. I feel like this just has the perfect amount of sudsing and cleansing, but it doesn't overly strip your skin. It doesn't make you feel too dried out or like squeaky clean in a bad way. I just really like this formula. It's a really large container. It just does everything it's supposed to do and nothing that it's not supposed to do. It doesn't have a fragrance, so that is why I really love this cleanser. Next, I wanted to talk about my favorite toner slash in between layer after I wash my skin but before I put in my actives and my skincare products. This is from Laneige. I've been using their cream skin for a long time. It has to be years by now and I've gone through so many bottles of this. This is actually an older container so after this I will be repurchasing the newer bottles but I use this almost every day especially in the fall and winter months when my skin gets extra dry. I normally use this mainly at night time but if the air has been extra dry I'll use it in the morning and the evenings but I really like that it adds a little bit extra moisture and it helps my actives to really sink in but it doesn't actually break me out so love that. For actives I have a very short list of actives that are always my go-to. If you know me very well you'll probably know that I am very consistent with my actives and the one that I love the most that I will always keep telling people about is using retinol. Anyone who wants that anti-aging effect if you want to look more youthful over time. This is really the only ingredient that's going to give you that but the issue is that it is a long-term commitment and there is sort of a learning curve to get into it. Your skin has to adjust to being able to handle retinol especially in the prescription strengths. But if you do it's the best skincare thing that I can recommend. If you guys want to know more about retinol especially prescription retinol I have an entire detailed video talking about retinol how to use it, how to adjust your skin to it. Just basically all of the information, anything you would want to know about it. I will also link that in the info box down below and up there. But what I've been using is Retin-A. I use the 0.025% amount, but I'm actually thinking about talking to my doctor and bumping it up to the next level because I have been using this for a couple of years now. Outside of retinol, the main ingredient that I like using as an active is always going to be vitamin C. This year I have a couple of different favorites that I've been using all the time. Of course, anything from SkinCeuticals, all of their versions of vitamin C. I haven't tried maybe every single one, but I've tried two, three, three different versions of their vitamin C, and they've all been really, really wonderful. The one I've been using lately is this Floretin CF, which has Floretin plus L-ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C and also ferulic acid. So this one is very similar to their CE Ferulic vitamin C serum, but it also has Floretin. I haven't really noticed any difference between the two, but uh, I really do like all of the vitamin C's that SkinCeuticals has. If you have tried a bunch of different vitamin C's, you'll know that their formula is really nicely encapsulated. So it's one of the vitamin C's where I do see a brightening effect on my skin. But yeah, vitamin C is just an all around wonderful antioxidant that helps protect against environmental damage. Most people tolerate vitamin C really well. So if you're not using Using any actives, definitely try out a vitamin C. If you want to try the skin suitable ones, I do think they're worth the splurge. And then another vitamin C that I was using a lot this past year is this Dr. Dennis Gross. This one is a vitamin C plus lactic acid combo. Lactic acid is a very gentle exfoliator and does have a really nice brightening effect. If you're pregnant and breastfeeding, a lot of people say to avoid just like every single kind of active, but I would actually say vitamin C and lactic acid are both very mild kind of actives that I personally think are totally okay during pregnancy and breastfeeding. So if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, then you might want to check out this Dr. Dennis Gross one because they're just both in the same bottle. But I personally had a lot of uh, good results using lactic acid during my pregnancies. The next product I've really enjoyed using this year in terms of actives that I haven't really talked a whole lot about before is actually this one from The Ordinary. It's their 
alpha arbutin, 2% plus HA, which is hyaluronic acid. So it does a little bit of moisturizing, but mainly the alpha arbutin is a sort of derivative of hydroquinone, which is the probably top ingredient for getting rid of like dark discoloration on your skin. However, I do feel like it's maybe easier to use since you don't really have to cycle on and off. I feel like when I do consistently use this, I do see a brightening effect on some of my dark spots. This has been very well used and loved for me. For facial moisturizers, there have been three favorites for me this year. This one is sort of my everyday go-to. I've used this for such a long time, so many years. This is by Olga Lorenzen. It's their weightless moisturizer. And I feel like with their redoing of their bottles, you get a lot more in the container. This is literally two fluid ounces, which a lot of moisturizers, I feel like just come in a much smaller container. So I've really been enjoying this. This is sort of of my everyday moisturizer. I just use one pump and spread it all over my face and I like that it doesn't give me any breakouts but it does give me a lot of hydration without being oily. So this is sort of my like everyday go-to and when my skin was extra parched and needed just a little bit of a boost. If I wanted that sort of dolphin skin, glass skin effect to my skin, this is what I used. This is by Dermalogica. It's the Phyto Nature Oxygen Cream. It is a little bit pricey, but I'm telling you there is nothing that gave me that like all over dewy glow look like this did. I do feel like it does have a little bit of tackiness, so I would just give yourself enough dry down time before you go to sleep at night. Otherwise, it might rub off on your pillow, but I do feel like this was such a beautiful moisturizer and made my skin just really juicy and plumpy. And then finally, another longtime favorite that I've been really using. This is my husband's favorite moisturizer, and it's still one of my favorites as well. This is Clinique Moisture Surge Intense, the 72 hour formula. I really love this container. I like that a little goes a really long way. And for it being an oil free formula, it is very hydrating. So I will love this forever and ever. It is sort of like a gel based formula. It's nice and creamy and thick, but not creamy where it leaves a weird film or anything yucky feeling on your skin. It is just one of my perfect moisturizers, especially as somebody who tends to be more acne prone. This has been just a really lovely, lovely moisturizer that I've used for such a long time. Next, I wanted to talk about sunscreen. I am an everyday sunscreen girly. Especially this year, I've done a few different skin treatments like in office lasers, I did the moxie laser, I did microneedling, which I also have a whole video talking about my experience with microneedling. I will link it up there. But especially when you get treatments like that, you have to be really careful to avoid the sun and they say use a really good mineral based sunscreen. There's really only one mineral sunscreen that I actually really Really enjoy using. A lot of mineral sunscreens tend to be really thick, heavy, almost oily feeling, like it feels really cakey on the skin. But this is the opposite of that. This is also a very, very long time favorite. I've used it for many years. It is by Isdin. It's a European formula, and maybe that makes the difference, but it's a very liquidy formula. Once you have it on, you don't feel it on your skin. It doesn't have any weird scent to it or anything like that. I know all mineral sunscreens leave a very very slight white cast. However, this one really was not bad at all. If you use enough, you do want a little bit of white cast to get that full coverage, but it plays really nicely under my makeup. It doesn't turn my skin any strange shades of gray or anything like that. And I just really enjoy using this. So this is the mineral one that I recommend to just about everybody. Make sure you shake it up before you use it. But my other favorite sunscreen, this has also been a very long time favorite. I've gone through a million bottles of this. This one is actually a mix of mineral and chemical sunscreens, but it's Elta MD UV Clear Broad Spectrum 46. So this is also another go-to if I do want a really seamless, no white cast kind of finish. It doesn't have a weird texture under it, although I do notice that this one can sometimes mess with some of my makeup formulas depending on which it is. Some of them it'll like roll up into little balls. However, as far as daily sunscreen goes, this is my number one favorite that's not like 100% mineral. So both of these, if you 
you are somebody that just has a hard time with sunscreens because it feels like there's stuff on your skin, these both don't feel that way. Try them out. And if you have other sunscreen recommendations that you think I should try that are similar to these formulas, let me know in the info box because I'm always looking for really good sunscreens. For oil cleansers, I've actually been using this as my daily makeup remover. It is by Pharmacy. It's their green clean makeup removing balm. As you can see, it has a minty green look to it. And it's just been doing a really great job of removing my makeup. It doesn't sting my eyes. It doesn't make my eyes like overly blurry when I use it. I do definitely think that with this and with any kind of oil cleansing to do the double cleansing method, an oil cleanser is not really meant to just be used on its own without a second cleansing with like a gel cleanser as well. However, it does a really fantastic job removing all of my tough makeup, all of my waterproof makeup. I wear mascaras that are waterproof almost every single time I do wear makeup. So I do have a lot of stubborn eye makeup that I always have to take off. But even with the most permanent kind of waterproof lipsticks, eyebrows, eyeliners, mascaras, this can get them all off. And I also feel like a little bit goes a really long way. Basically when it's in your hands, it just melts down to a cleansing oil. But these are really great if you're traveling as well because it's not technically a liquid. So I don't take a big one. I actually have a little trial size of this exact same formula and it's really nice in those situations. I guess that's like a on the side little extra tip. If you're traveling, use oil balms because they still count as a solid. For body lotion, this has been another long time favorite of mine. It's by Glow Recipe. This is the Watermelon Glow Pink Dream Body Cream. I have a soft spot in my heart for some fruity kind of lotions, especially watermelon. I love the scent of watermelon. I just think it's so juicy and fresh. And when I use this, it makes my skin so soft. I feel like it does have some very mild exfoliation in there. So it just makes my skin so nice. I love getting into bed after I take a shower and put this all over my body because I like how it smells and I wake up the next morning super soft. So I really, really love this one. The only thing is I feel like I run through it pretty quickly. And then finally, because I do feel like it is skincare, I don't know if any of you guys have been pierced within the last year or so. I have this piercing up here that I got literally over a year ago, but some of my upper piercings just take a really long time to heal and it's very important to be cleaning it multiple times a day. This is what I've been using. I have tried doing all kinds of like sea salt soaks and things like like that, but it gets really messy, it gets difficult to do, and I just find that this spray works so well. It makes it so quick and easy to be able to just regularly cleanse my piercings, and they heal so much better when I do. So this is what I use. It's from Medi Cleanse, and it's a piercing aftercare fine mist spray, but what I really love is it's such a big size. It's 7.5 ounces. It lasts me a really long time. I feel like it's a really good price for what it is, so this has been a big repurchase and a very big skincare favorite for using a saline spray. So if you guys have any piercings, definitely check this one out. So I guess that is about it for this year's skincare favorites. If you enjoyed this or if you like these kinds of videos, make sure you hit thumbs up. I will leave the link to the beauty version in the info box down below. I'll link it one more time up there in case you want to check that out as well. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being with me for another year watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!